This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hi, this is Joe Rabel with Invest Like a Pro. And uh, today I'm going to do an update on the stock market. I'm going to do the spider. I'm going to talk about a couple other indices real quick, just to, so you can see what's really taking place. Um, I'm even going to mention an individual stock today uh, that I want to because I want to show what I'm seeing when I go through my reviews. So let's go ahead and get going through this. I have a slightly different look here. What I've done is I've created an Excel spreadsheet and I kind of color coded this. One of the things I wanted to mention is that um, when I was teaching technical analysis to institutional money managers way back, like 30 years ago when I started, and I wanted to show them how, we, how you'd go about uh, seeing what's going on, we'd, we'd look at all different types of things like you know moving averages and MACD and momentum, uh, group action and all that. And I'd have it laid out like this, positive, neutral, negative. And one of the ways that I taught them, I would say, look, go through about 10 or 15 stocks and label them based on what you're seeing in all the either uh, uh, the trend and the momentum and whether you think the relative strength looks good and whether you think of the group and add those all together. And I want you to think that way for this market conditions. And the reason is, is that what we want to be thinking about is these were negative. We had uh, monthly never really turned negative. It was neutral just because we haven't really gotten a full fledged move to the downside. But this was negative. This was negative. Momentum um, was negative at one point, And these were clearly negative uh, at another point. And so you have all this stuff where the volatility was a negative, And now that's switched this week to a positive. I'll go over that in a second. And so the point here is that if you see that what's taken place, where these were about a month or two ago, is a lot different than where they are now. We're actually showing a significant amount of improvement, even though we only have two X's in the positive column. You want to get this flavor, this feel. And so I think this might be a better way to display it so you can see these moving back and forth. This is what I do on my uh, Monday report where I show... Um, it's a little bit more extensive, but I have kind of the same category uh, for each trend in, in individual stocks by sector. And we're looking for ones that were negative and are turning. And uh, the same thing on the positive side, ones that were positive and they're losing momentum or turning uh, to neutral. So I think this is a good format for you to learn from. Um, let's just look at, so I changed this as well. So I've got the daily... Uh, ATR here, and you can see what's happened. We're now below a declining. This is what I was mentioning before, um, how it looked kind of like back in uh, the uh, June, July area where the ATR was rolling over and we've kind of made this topping pattern now and is very close to taking out this low. Um, but either way, we're below a declining uh, 18MA, so that's considered to be a positive now. And uh, I'll go over the trend and the momentum in a second. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that on a weekly chart, even though this is still positive, we got the a a weekly ATR turning down and this is flat. I mean, it's it, it's still rising. I mean, if you look at it by the numbers, but it's starting to flatten out. It's lost a lot of slope. So to turn this to the downside and turn the weekly to positive would not take very much. Um, and then uh, the momentum uh, or the overbought oversold is actually flat out 50. Let me change that here. This should be a 50. So we've got that. The sentiment number went to a plus six. Now I have that at neutral because the reality is, is that we're going to need to see more bulls before it provides a, a negative. It's not really a negative right now, but I wouldn't put it in the really bullish camp that it was when it was at negative at the bottom. Both of these bottoms this was flashing a pretty strong buy signal and we were getting pretty deeply oversold. So those can be really nice components working together to know that you're in position for a rally. So this is a good format. I think, you know, if you wanted to track this, in fact, what might not be a bad idea is just to take a screenshot of this and throw this into a... Um, Word, uh, word file and then each week just take the snapshot and add it in and then you can see the changes that take place each week that would be a, a pretty good idea i think all right let's go to 
the uh, four time frames. There's not a big change in the monthly. I mean, the one thing that I want to point out is that um, I know I've been more on the bullish side here recently um, because I do think we're in the midst of a, of a rally, but we are still below a declining 18 month. And the MACD lines are going the wrong way, right? I mean, we're, we're going this way. Now, we're above the zero line, but they're going this way. So we know that we've got some headwinds as we work up from both the moving average line, this prior resistance zone, and the fact that the MACD lines are kind of going the other way. Now, because it's a monthly and you see this histogram starting to creep a little higher, yeah, I mean, we could get a little bit more of a rally. So um, that's how I'm looking at this right now. Now, if the momentum on the smaller time frames uh, starts to really improve, then that's going to give me the ability to uh, stay in this longer. Um, I did a show for uh, Stock Charts that was released today, uh, this afternoon. Uh, you might want to check that out. It's called Stop Guessing. Um, and uh, the reality is we, we're looking at these key resistance areas and making sure that we're not just guessing at these levels and shorting or just selling out or whatever. Uh, we want to see what the momentum looks like. And we're at a really critical point here. Um, just to bring everyone up to speed, we have this divergence in place on the MACD. We have a divergence in the ADX, but again, it hasn't been as as a bullish of a sign because it's been above 25 up until today. ADX uh, this week has is dropping down under 25 for the first time, uh, really since it turned up back here early early in the year. So when I see that, I'm thinking more consolidation. Now, consolidation, we've been in a downtrend, so consolidation would be more positive than negative in this situation, if that makes sense. We we had a really bearish uh, scenario based on the ADX, and now that it's dropping, it's suggesting more consolidation. Doesn't actually mean bullish, but we could be forming more of a sideways pattern, at least for now. Um, now, it gets interesting as we get into the daily chart. And let's go ahead and zero in on this because we do have, you know, I can draw in channel lines here and, I, you know, we've, we're have we definitely kind of hitting the upper end of this channel. It's pretty simple to do. Uh, but we have confirmation on the MACD. So it hit a new high with price here and then it hit another new high with price here. Green DI is making a move to the upside. Okay, this is the first time we've seen this since back here. Now back here, we pulled back and then if we turn up and make a higher pivot low, we turn up like this and make a higher pivot low like that, that's a very good sign. If we do the same thing here, it's a very good sign that we're going back up to test here. So we're at a pretty critical point because the ADX is low. So we had pretty strong ADX on the decline. You see this decline? We had confirming ADX to the downside. So we don't know, is this a climax bottom? Or is this a, um, a reversal? I mean, is it a climax or is it just a continuation? Meaning, are we just rallying up, getting our ABC to the upside with no real strength in the ADX line, and then we're going to turn to the downside? Well, we don't know right now. <laughs> and, and I wouldn't pre-guess this. If you can make a pivot low here and turn up and have a good day on Friday, uh, this is obviously being done on Thursday. So if we if we get a good day on Friday and make a higher low, and maybe it doesn't happen tomorrow, maybe it's Monday, but we're looking for that to take place above the 18. If we can get that to take place sometime over the next few days, I would think that would be pretty confirming evidence. We'd have a pivot low above 25 on the green DI, and that would suggest to me that we want to push up into the higher price area. So that's kind of what I'm watching. Now, if that doesn't happen and we start to get red bars here, and this starts to, you know, kind of roll over. Green starts to come down and red starts and they crisscross. And this crosses back through the 18. Now we know that this could actually be a failure setup, a failed buy signal, right? Into, um, it's not really bearish on the weekly. It's more neutral, but it, it is under some resistance. So we kind of want to think like Sherlock Holmes here, okay? And that's because... Um, we're running into some resistance, okay? We've got some issues coming up as we come down. We're up to the 4,000 mark, uh, 400 for the uh, spider. We're hitting this downtrend line. We're hitting the 40 week. Uh, that's the 200 day, which is very, very popular. And the reason why I'm saying we want to think like Sherlock Holmes is the question here becomes, 
it, it, the signal is going to be what I'd call the dog that didn't bark. And uh, Sherlock Holmes, it did. A, there's this famous story of him solving a crime because the dog didn't bark when he should have. And this is really what we're looking for here, right? I mean, if this doesn't sell off here, it's telling us something. We're hitting a really key area and we're not getting that much selling right now. If, if this is not causing a sell-off right now, then we have to assume that's bullish. So hope, you know, sellers should be showing up. We're rallying up. We're hitting resistance. We're hitting the 4,000 mark. We're hitting the 40 week. We're hitting the downtrend line. So where are the sellers? That's what we need to see. Don't see any sellers right now. Look at the volume action. So if we turn up from here, you call this the dog that didn't bark signal. And I think that means we're moving higher. So I do want you to think that, uh, think about that. Now, 18 has crossed down below the 40 on the on the hourly chart and we have a zero line reversal setting up with low ADX. So we have a potential pinch play setting up with a zero line reversal on the hourly. So um, we don't really have any overrun here, but we also don't really have a trend line to draw. So I'd probably want to see a little bit of confirmation um, you know, in the way that it sets up, it might come up, come down, do something like that. I mean, that would be a pretty good sign. As long as this doesn't overrun too much, we don't really have much selling strength. So we ought to be on the lookout for, um, you know, some potentially positive action. And we know that every week there's new data coming out based on inflation. So you just have to be on your toes. You have to recognize that there's a lot of volatility in this market. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that. Look at the Look at the movement here. It's, it's, it's interesting, though, because even though we're seeing a lot of movement, it's not really being reflected when you look at the daily um, ATR. So th that ATR is starting to roll over a little bit, and it's telling you, yeah, there's noise, but it's, it's, the noise is, is uh, definitely dropping. So anyway, uh, that's the update for the week. Go ahead and post any questions or comments. Thanks.